Okay, and I think we're ready to get the show started. So thanks everybody for joining us today. Just looking at the poll results, that's quite interesting as well. We've got 25% of people joining us from outside the UK. So special thanks if you're staying up late or getting up early to say hello to us today. Um, so in regards to the topic, obviously we're gonna be covering how to move your face-to-face -face training to live online. Before we do get started today, it's probably worthwhile us just doing some quick introductions. So for those of you who don't know me, my name's Jared and I'm the success manager at Arlo. Uh, I oversee the support and service teams, um, basically to make sure they've got the knowledge and tools that they need to ensure that you guys can be successful with your training businesses. A bit about my background, so I've worked in customer experience for just over a decade now. Uh, a range of industries, so finance, retail, and more recently software with Arlo. Uh, on the call, we've also got for, uh, from our success team, Ezra from uh, Customer Success. So he's going to say hello. Yeah, thanks, Jared. Yeah, hi, guys. Um, yeah, I've been involved with, you know, Arlo software going on eight years now, so quite a while, uh, four years of which I was an end user or administrator at um, the engineering membership body, uh, which was called IPENS back then, now called uh, Engineering New Zealand. Uh, well, there we ran primarily engineering related courses, uh, a few project management courses, business related courses, all sorts of things. Um, yeah, and now going on four years here at Arlo Software, I've had a range of roles, um, you know, started off product support, uh, then moved into web integration, and now customer success where I am um, today. Yeah, and so I guess my, my primary role now is to ensure that uh, uh, our customers are successful. Yeah, back to you, Jared. Awesome, thanks, Ezra. So what are we here to discuss today? Well, by now we're, you know, we're sure that you're all feeling the impact of COVID-19, especially on your uh, your training businesses. Obviously, in an effort to keep, you know, our communities safe, people aren't leaving their homes. Lockdowns are becoming more and more common in different parts of the world, and this obviously presents some major challenges for, you know, traditional face-to-face -face training providers who rely on those people showing up to keep the revenue coming in. But at the same time, it does present an opportunity you know, for you guys to be early adopters of online learning. And so that's what we're here to talk about today to hopefully allow you to get a competitive advantage over some of those other training providers that haven't made that move yet. Um, so let's jump into the agenda. We've got a few good topics to cover. Um, I'm just gonna turn my camera off for a while so we can focus on the slides. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna be going through an industry update. Um, and just have a look at what sort of impact we've seen um, COVID-19 have on our, uh, on our training providers and our customers. Uh, there's some really interesting stuff there. Then we're gonna look at live online webinars and Ezra's gonna take you through the platform dive in and actually show you how you can set up webinars inside of Arlo. And it's actually a lot easier than you might think. So we're really excited about that um, using tools like Zoom and GoToWebinar. We're also gonna show you how to open up some new streams of revenue by selling your recorded online training because you already have you know, that PI. Once you've done the, the webinar, you can reuse that and it's, it's, it's quite easy. Uh, also transferring registrants from a physical course to an online course. We're seeing lots of physical course cancellations at the moment and people want to know how do we move those registrants across. Then we're gonna be taking a sneak peek at our Zoom integration, which the team are working on right now. We're really excited about that and it's it's gonna be really, really simple to use. So we're gonna show you what, what they're doing in that space and um, hopefully gonna have that out to the door uh, for you all soon to use. And finally, we know that choosing a tool, um, I guess, and scheduling the webinar is only part of the journey. So we're also just gonna be going through some tips and tricks on how to run an effective webinar. Uh, now, before we do dive in, I guess, just a few general housekeeping comments. Um, we've obviously got a lot of people on the call today. Um, so we, we can't hear you, but we do still want this to be as interactive as possible. And I'm sure that some of you will have questions as we go. So if you do have any questions, plug them into the questions tab uh, located in the GoToWebinar toolbar. And we've got uh, the wonderful Nick Buttery from our support team on standby, who's gonna be ready to help. If you do forget to plug in your questions as we go, we'll have some time at the end of the session for you to add them in. And we'll also be discussing some of the most frequently asked questions as well throughout the session so that we can share them with, uh, I guess, all of the attendees. Now, if beyond the webinar, you still do have um, some questions, we're gonna be sending out some links for you to book in some one-on-one -on -one time with your customer success managers. 
And we're also gonna be sharing the recording with you as well. So if you can't stick around for the whole hour, then you're gonna have a copy of that too. Um, all right, so I guess let's jump straight into it. So first off, we're gonna be talking about some of the impacts we've seen to training businesses so far, um, primarily due to COVID-19. And we've done this by compiling data from over 450 training providers worldwide uh, and basically compared the last couple of months to see what, what trends are looking like. So first of all, what impact has COVID-19 had on the training industry? Well, one of the key things we've seen is that traditional face-to-face -face training has taken a, a massive hit. We've seen a 156% increase in face-to-face -face registration cancellations. Uh, we've also seen 20% decrease in face-to-face -face registrations coming through already. Uh, and one of the biggest ones is 166% increase in face-to-face -face course cancellations. And this is obviously because, you know, at the moment in many places, you're not allowed to leave your house unless it's absolutely necessary. Some of the surprising, I, I guess, um, trends that we've seen, this, this data here, these figures have really started to shoot up from sort of the 20th of March onwards. So we actually expect this trend to continue to rise. So I guess what we're saying is if, if you're only doing face-to-face -face training at the moment, obviously that, that's gonna cause you a bit of a problem. And so we need to be thinking about, okay, how can we get through this period and what else can we be doing to you know, ensure our registrants can continue to come to our training, we can keep revenue coming in the door and, and keep our businesses afloat. Our, one of the other interesting trends that we've seen, and, and this is you know, sort of expected and exactly why we're running this webinar, um, online courses are becoming more popular already. We've seen a 285% increase on live online courses scheduled between February and March. So that's a, a massive jump. So a lot of our training providers are actually already getting onto this, which is great to see. And so for those of you who aren't, um, you know, it is it's better to do it as soon as possible, you know, to make sure you can make that jump and, and, and be ahead of the curve. We've seen 148% increase in live online registration. So, you know, obviously our customers are scheduling more live online events. Registrants in turn are, are, are coming to those events. You've got lots of people working from home remotely at the moment. Now's a good time to get some training in the door. Um, and we're obviously seeing that coming in, in through the registration numbers. Uh, and we've already seen a 45% increase in live online courses completed by registrants just sort of in the last couple of weeks of March. So, you know, those 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 training providers that have actually made that shift um, are already getting people in the door finishing those live online courses. So it's it's really exciting to see it. And it's really promising for some of the solutions that we've we've got in place. So I guess why are customers moving to live online and, and why should you? So we've just put together, I guess, some key reasons for you to think about. One of them is obviously business continuity. Um, so it's estimated that within the UK, 93 or more than nine out of 10 households have access to the internet. So if you can get some live online courses up, chances are that your typical registrants, your typical day-to-day face-to-face registrants will still be able to come to your courses because they have you know, the tools that they need to be able to do so. Uh, it's low cost. So obviously a face-to-face -face course, you've got to consider things like venues, if you don't have your own catering, um, you know, all the external costs involved with, with running those sorts of training sessions. When you're online, you can keep it, you know, really, really low cost in, in terms of, you know, a webinar provider, your presenter, um, essentially your equipment, and, and that's all you need to get going. Convenience, so users can log in from the comfort of their own home. Obviously, people aren't, aren't wanting to travel right now. Um, so, you know, just being able to give them the ability to simply jump onto their PC log in and start training is a, a big benefit for, for the users. And it's easily scalable. So, you know, unlike a face-to-face -face course where you might have limited space for people to come, um, you know, you could run a, a webinar for 10 people, 100 people or 500 people. Um, it, it's basically as large as your, your webinar room is going to allow. Um, now, obviously, depending on the course, you know, you might want to keep your courses, you know, fairly interactive or personable. You can do things like breakout sessions, or, you know, run them in smaller sessions if you want to. But if you wanted to just get as many people in as the door, webinars allow you to, to do that. Okay, so I guess what we're now going to do is just take a quick look at how you can turn your traditional face-to-face -face courses into e-learning, get them promoted on your website and get people in the door using Arlo. And so to dive into the platform now and take you through the webinar setup, I'm just going to quickly hand it over to Ezra and our success team. Yeah, thanks, Jared. 
Cool. Um, yeah, as you can see here, um, sorry, uh, Arlo makes the promotion of live online courses as simple as possible, um, essentially providing a, a seamless registration experience for your uh, your registrants and your potential registrants. Uh, to demonstrate this, before you hop in the, the back end, we're going to take a look at uh, one of our customers. So this is uh, one of our customers, Springhouse. Uh, essentially, they uh, what they've got here is a full integration of Arlo onto their website. Now, Springhouse teaches a comprehensive curriculum with the uh, with a range of desktop technical and uh, te technology training to, to meet both uh, business and personal needs, essentially. They have a 300 courses in their curriculum and, and they continue to grow uh, day in day. And I think you know, due to the circumstances, they're gonna see uh, quite a bit more growth to come. Uh, let's take a look at, I just wanna find, let me just take control. There we go. Let's take a look at their course catalog. So if we hover over the course catalog menu on uh, Springhouse's website, what we can see is a list of all the different courses uh, that they offer. Now, these are all being fed directly from Arlo. And we're gonna go just select on uh, the Microsoft Teams course. I think if anyone's booming in this in this time, it's all the, uh, the Zoom and Microsoft Teams <laughs> at the moment. Cool. So now we're on the, the catalog page with uh, all the Teams uh, course offerings. I'm going to select the Microsoft Teams course so I can see how many available classes are there. And I'll click on that. Now we land on the Microsoft Teams event template page. Now, you know, all of you, all of you at the moment, I'm pretty sure I understand how a template page works. You all have one uh, connected from your uh, Arlo management platform. All of the course information is presented to me using website content sections in Arlo. And from the top of the page, I can select the specific location using the drop down filter. Uh, I can also uh, apply the online filter if I'm only interested in seeing the online delivery dates for this course. You can see on the right, see how it's got physical locations like Exton. As soon as I apply the online filter, you can see all of those physical locations are filtered out and I'm only left with the live online courses. So this is just, you know, makes it easy to find what you're looking for. So if you're only looking for online webinars, you can easily toggle that online filter and be presented with only the, the online dates that are delivered by a webinar. So once I see the date I want to attend, I click on it, click register, and I get taken to the registration process. So the registrant then enters their details and proceeds to payment as they would with, uh, you know, the, oh, sorry, jumped ahead there, as they would with a uh, you know, normal face-to-face -face course in Arlo. And after registering, the registrant will see the, the webinar joining instructions. Uh, obviously, instead of a venue, uh, they'll be getting some you know, joining instructions on how to access the webinar meeting room as well as the URL to join it. And we're gonna, we're gonna take a closer look at that later. Now that we've had a look at the, the front end experience, or in other words, what your potential registrants will see, let's dive into the Arlo management platform and show you how to schedule these live online courses within the platform uh, in only a matter of minutes. So here we are in the Arlo dashboard where we can see the overall activity of the system. And I wanna hover over courses. From the dashboard, we're gonna jump into the webinars menu item by hovering over the, sorry, by clicking uh, webinars. And as we just select webinars, uh, essentially this is where all the, the webinars or live online courses live in Arlo. Just FYI, you can also schedule a webinar using the standard face-to-face -face course wizard and just changing the delivery style to live online instead of at a venue. But we'll stick to the, the webinar wizard for now, uh, just for demonstration purposes. And now we're gonna press new webinar to bring to begin creating a new webinar. Uh, one of the great things, I guess, about Arlo is uh, using Arlo to schedule your live online webinars is that you can actually schedule these off the back of your already existing course templates, thus saving you time and effort as you won't have to enter all the course information again. So let's, let us use an existing template here, and we're gonna use Agile for Managers, uh, that template there, and we'll just select on that and press Next. Great, on the next step of the wizard, or the general step, uh, we can set the price information for this webinar. Now price is not a template level setting, which allows us to differ our webinar price from our face-to-face -face pricing, face-to-face -face pricing, courses pricing on this template. So we're gonna drop the price of this webinar, 
down a wee bit, seeing as this course will have a lot less overheads than a typical face-to-face -face course would. Uh, webinars are also typically shorter, more condensed versions of their face-to-face -face counterparts. And uh, as we discussed earlier, one of the key advantages or, of online training is that it typically has lower overheads. For example, you don't need to pay for presenter travel. Uh, you don't need to hire a venue or purchase catering, uh, thus allowing you to pass on these savings to your delegates. So we're going to just drop that price down to 100 and then move on. Now, continuing through the setup, we get to the website step of the wizard. You can see that this course uh, lives in our Agile category already. Uh, and we're also going to add it uh, or add it to an additional category that we've created beforehand uh, called the Live Online category. So that customers can easily filter on the website and easily find the online courses uh, offerings. Some of your uh, website integrations might also have that online toggle filter, which is there uh, regardless of whether you've set up a category or not. Uh, so just be aware of that, that you might not need to set a category uh, if you've already got that function. Move along now to the uh, the next step. Now we get to probably the most important part of this is, is where we put in the, the, the details of the course, like the webinar um, start date, finish date, and the URL and so forth. Uh, so we're gonna just put in any date. I'm not sure, I think it's next week we, we plug in, yep. Now the time zone is important because unlike face-to-face uh, -face courses with a, with a physical venue, with the webinars, you're not actually restricted by geography, so you can actually potentially receive registrations from anywhere in the world. Like, just like this webinar, you know, we've got 75% of customers uh, joining from UK and 25% from somewhere else, which could be anywhere really. <laughs> so for this, uh, the time zone is important uh, and including the event instructions and iCal appointment as well. So this is attached to the uh, event instructions email to clearly specify to attendees that the correct start time of the webinar. So we're gonna, Plug in our time zone here, uh, London, and we've set the date and time zone. Now we're gonna add the webinar details and joining instructions. Simply add the URL, uh, which you would like to send to the registrants and presenters. Now the URL, URL uh, tongue, tongue tied there, the URL field is universal and will allow you to share the details of the webinar meeting room uh, using any of the providers, including Zoom, go to webinar and at Webex. You know, there's a few others out there, but these are just the ones we're mentioning here. We won't be covering this in the session, but we do actually have a direct integration with GoToWebinar. Uh, so you can set up webinars in GoToWebinar and they will automatically feed into Arlo. You know, one of the key advantages of uh, the GoToWebinar integration is that when users join, uh, the, uh, the webinar attendance is automatically fed into Arlo. Okay, now we're, we're currently working on something similar with Zoom. And we'll, I'll have my colleague Jared uh, show you a sneak preview of what that looks like currently uh, towards the end of the session. Uh, but let's just plug in a, a Zoom URL because that seems to be the, the market leader at the moment. Everyone I've interacted with uh, recently is, is currently using Zoom. Uh, and now we're going to plug in some joining instructions. Now, you can add any joining instructions that you need uh, registrants to receive, uh, things like uh, phone numbers they can dial into. Uh, login credentials if they need it. Uh, it's completely up to you as to what goes in the webinar instruction fields. Most webinar software usually has default uh, joining instructions that you can just paste in there. Um, and all of this information will be sent automatically to registrants and presenters in the confirmation emails that they get sent. Uh, next we're going to add our presenter, Jeremy Clarkson. And uh, you can add multiple presenters if you so choose. Okay, now moving on to the, the registration step of the wizard. There are a number of registration settings uh, to choose from here to control the overall registration experience of this webinar. So essentially this is what, um, what you're controlling when someone clicks register, the experience that they see there. We won't get into too much detail here because uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, the registration settings uh, from all the face-to-face -face courses that you've probably scheduled. Uh, but you can customize the registration form, you know, enable rules to prevent or allow certain registrations, enforce registration limits and more. Uh, if you're wanting to fully engage with participants in your webinar uh, and allow them to participate and verbally discuss you know, the, the various topics and ask questions and so forth, uh, we'd recommend setting a limit to the number of registrants to ensure that the webinar meeting room doesn't get too overwhelmed. And just be aware too, uh, you know, something we found out yesterday in our New Zealand uh, webinar that some software does have 
um, max limits on the number of people that can join the webinar meeting room, which we found was 100. So just be aware of that. Some software does cap off, um, you know, the, the limit of how many people can actually join the meeting room. Uh, you know, webinar like the one you're on now is predominantly one way. Uh, setting a, registr a registration limit is, is not really necessary when it's uh, predominantly a one way webinar. So, you know, for this example, I'm going to set 24 and then move on to the next final step, which is the communication step. Now, here you can configure all the course related communication for this webinar that we're setting up. Uh, things like adding special instructions and attachments to be sent uh, to registrants. You can schedule reminders as well. Uh, and follow-up emails and ad surveys and so forth. Uh, we're, we're focused particularly on the registration confirmation email or the event instructions. This is probably the most important email that you'd, you'd send to registrants. Uh, so if we, quick, if we click edit here, um, we can easily add some special instructions just to say, you know, you, whether they need to be there, be there early or complete any pre-reading that, um, that needs to be done before the course. This is where you'd put that information. And then we hit OK. And now that we've, um, we've pretty much done everything, we can go ahead and create and approve the course or the webinar, and we're taken to the, the course profile page. And that's it, our webinar is now published and open to take registrations. Uh, and we can easily just put through a registration. And let's take a look at what was actually sent to a registrant or what would be sent to a registrant. Uh, I'll click on that. And you can see here the registrant uh, gets all the uh, the webinar information presented to them as well as the additional special instructions that we've placed in there you know and you can see also attached is a calendar appointment uh, and there's also the, the zoom link that they can easily just click um, and just like i guess a, a heads up the, these email designs are also customizable and we'll be we'll be um, releasing the ability to do so within the platform shortly so um, stay tuned for that and obviously, when they click that link on the uh, the webinar date, they'll be able to join the meeting room. But that's pretty much it. Uh, it's the the whole creating a webinar experience. Now, obviously, you'll you'll probably have face-to-face -face courses that you've got scheduled that uh, you know people are obviously during the during this um, pandemic and during the circumstances they're wanting to either cancel, um, you know, because uh, because of circumstances they can't leave the house. Uh, so what, what we'd recommend, what we've done in there is just schedule a webinar. So you can actually transfer registrants. So you want to try and, I guess, you know, see if they want to, to, to jump on an online version of the course. Uh, and just like we've set up here, we're going to take you through how to transfer registrants if uh, they, they decide to take up that offer. It's pretty simple with Arlo. Let's take a look at um, how to do this now. So from our face-to-face -face course, uh, we're going to select the registrant that needs moving. So let's just say Wimu Lock uh, wants to transfer onto the, the live online version. So he still wants to attend the course. Obviously, he can't due to the restrictions that are in place. Um, so we just find his registration on the face-to-face -face course. Now we, uh, we press transfer registration. And we can just easily choose what course uh, Wimu wants to be transferred to and he wants to be transferred to the online version. And uh, as, our, as our webinar was scheduled using the same course template, I can, I can easily just select, um, just as I have done, the webinar from the drop-down menu and click Transfer Registrant. Now you'll notice the prompt gets thrown, uh, just like any, uh, any change in Arlo. It does prompt you before it sends the communication. All change notifications are automated too, so the billing contact and registrant can be kept up to date uh, with any change changes processed. So if you don't want to send, uh, you know, the change notification to the auto contact, and you only want to send the transfer, just untick uh, whatever email you don't want to send, and then hit save. And now you can see I'm on my online course, and I can see that Woodenwell was transferred uh, nice and easily onto the online course. And let's just have a look at the transfer notification sent to Woodenwell. You can see here. Uh, from the email sent, the details of the new webinar are clearly highlighted and visible and include the webinar joining instructions. There is even an updated calendar appointment attached to the email uh, and Arlo's order system also makes it simple to refund any orders that may have been overpaid as a result of the transfer. Uh, for example, if your online courses are cheaper than your face-to-face -face courses or credit uh, or credit orders if they're unpaid, um, we won't cover the order processes in this session, but if you do need assistance, um, do, do reach out to my colleague uh, Nick. Uh, or to uh, the support team at support at arlo.co.
Now, what we've covered uh, so far in the webinar creation process is, is the method for basic events. Now, I'm pretty sure you know, some of our customers have uh, have face-to-face, -face, uh, sorry, have multi-session events uh, scheduled. So the, the process does look a, dif a bit different there. So uh, if you have any questions or you want to know what the uh, the process looks like, either reach out to my colleague Nick. Um, also, you can book a time with me, uh, and I can take you through what that process looks like. Uh, and then we can, you know, have a one-to-one. -one. I can show you how to how to schedule webinars on multi-session events. Now let's take a look at um, selling recorded webinars. So let's just say you 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 presented the live online webinar. We highly recommend you record it. Uh, just like we're recording the session, and we're going to distribute after the session. Uh, you can record your webinars, and then you know sell it as a pre-recorded option on your on your website. Now, what most webinar providers these days do allow you to record your webinars so that you can easily share them with registrants. Um, and a lot of our customers I've found are taking the advantage of this to open up a new revenue stream by selling pre-recorded webinars on demand. Uh, Alan makes it super easy to do, so let's just uh, jump in and, and take a look, shall we? Here's another one of our customers, uh, similar to Springhouse, LegalWise, who have Arlo integrated into their own website. Uh, if we scroll down, we can see that LegalWise offers uh, legal CPD seminars for lawyers and, and solicitors and professional development conferences for tax and business advisory. Uh, they have a website page dedicated to showing customers their online demand uh, categories. And if we select uh, 10 points here, we can see uh, we're taken to the 10 points category. So what I mean by 10 points is, is lawyers and, and I know accountants as well, uh, in order to, to retain that chartered status, they need to accumulate a certain number of CPD points. Uh, and this is just how they've um, grouped it. So they know the users best and they know that the users just want to want to easily just accumulate those points. So they've categorized them by, based on the amount of points. So let's just select one of their courses, this 10 points in one day government practice course. And now we're taken to the event template page. And as we saw in Springhouse's website, the event template page displays all the information about the, the course uh, in any sessions within it. Now I can choose uh, from the list of sessions covering different content and easily purchase on-demand uh, recording. And uh, just like we, we saw in the Springhouse example, you know, they'd enter their details and, and proceed uh, with the registration. But that's about it. That's, um, you know, that's the front-end experience. Let's dive into the platform now and I'll show you how you can actually sell safe, sell, say, uh, <laughs> sell self paced recorded webinars using Arlo. Cool. So now we're in the platform. Uh, this is that uh, online course that we scheduled. We want to go to e-learning. So we're going to move away from the webinar we scheduled earlier and uh, jump into jump across to e-learning and select e-learning modules. Just click on that. Uh, next, we're going to create a new e-learning module. Now e-learning is, is what we call it. So it was it was designed for e-learning but that doesn't mean to say you only can sell e-learning through Arlo. And I'm going to show you how we can do this and how we can modify uh, the default, I guess, design of what e-learning was built for. So we're going to press new e-learning. Just like webinars, uh, we can choose to use an existing course template. And we just select that and we click on Agile for Managers. Now this is very useful as it means you know that on a single course template page on your website you can offer multiple delivery uh, options you know face to face live online and self paced just like we saw with we legalwise's website we'll use the same course template we uh, we use to set up an on demand version and on to the next step which is the general settings now we um now we're on the general settings we can set the the price of the module as well as change the terminology. Now we're going to update the terminology of this e-learning module we're creating. This is used on your website and in communications actually sent to your registrants. Uh, in this case, we know we're selling a pre-recorded webinar, so let's uh, let's call it that. We're going to just change the terminology to recorded webinar. And, and just remember the key difference between a webinar and an e-learning analysis is that a webinar has a date like a live online webinar has a date, a start date, finish date, uh, whereas e-learning modules don't. So they can be used to sell things like pre-recorded webinars, access to e-learning content, uh, even books. Um, the freedom to change the terminology of what you're selling through e-learning modules in Arlo essentially opens the door to sell uh, almost anything in the platform. 
Now we're going to go to the next step, uh, which is the website settings. And just like we did with the live online version, uh, we can apply a category uh, to say on demand, just, just making it easier for our registrants and our, our potential registrants to easily find on demand versions of the, the course and, and just easily find what they're looking for. On to the next step, the activity URL. Now, we're going to add the content URL. This is the link that will be provided to your registrants to access the course. For recorded webinars, usually you'll get this from your webinar provider's platform, or if you have saved, um, if you've saved your recording locally on your desktop, uh, you'll need to host it somewhere such as Dropbox, YouTube, Vimeo, or you know Google. There's, there's tons of providers out there. It's a good idea also to password protect uh, these resources to prevent unauthorized access if you can. Um, I know in a lot of cases, providers also have ways to allow you to share a video privately or unlisted. And you know the only way to access that video is if you have that private link, uh, which we're placing in here for Zoom. And on to the next step, the registrations step. You can change the messaging of the resource you're selling. For example, if it's e-learning, we'll say complete at your own pace. Uh, but for this instance, we're selling a recorded webinar. Uh, so we'd most likely say something along the lines of, you know, watch at your own leisure or watch any time, something along those lines. On the last step, uh, the final step, the communication settings. This is where we can modify the e-learning instructions or the instructions for this pre-recorded webinar we're creating. They are fully customizable, just press edit to change uh, the, the email. And you can see here, course terminology and links to access the course are populated automatically uh, using what we call replaces. Uh, for example, this email will read to access the recorded webinar, uh, as this is the uh, terminology we selected earlier. Please, um, please click on the link below and then paste in the URL. So you can see that online activity URL, that's gonna place in the URL uh, that we we specified earlier, but you can delete the whole lot and, and you know put in your own uh, verbiage if you want to. Uh, you know because you've got full access to customize the email, you can place in whatever you want. Uh, you've even got access to HTML, so you can even embed the video if you wanted to do that. That way, they don't even need to leave the email, but it's totally up to you. It's um, your choice there. And that's pretty much it. That's the uh, the communication settings all done, uh, and we can create and approve, and then we land on the the course page just like we did uh, with the live online webinars. Now because e-learning activities have no scheduled date, uh, they will remain on your website for as long as you want until you decide to remove it. Uh, let's take a look now at the what the registrant was sent and if we jump into the registration to view the instructions, uh, we can see that the registrant's provided with all the details that require. Uh, the tools we've covered like the tools, the tools I've covered today um, like webinars and e-learning modules are already available in your platform. So they're in Arlo right now. Uh, so if you're looking to make the transition to online, there really is no, no better time than now. Uh, if you do need assistance with the transition to online, uh, I'm running free, we're running free consultancy. So you know, just, just reach out to us. Uh, and also keep an eye out for uh, in-app COVID messaging on your Arlo platform, as well as emails that our marketing team send. Uh, and just follow the links to book a time with myself and your customer success manager. And thanks for your time. I'm now going to hand it over the reins back to our global support manager, Jared, to take you through uh, exciting development we have currently underway uh, that will make this this whole online process uh, even more seamless. Uh, and that's our integration with Zoom. Back to you, Jared. Awesome. Thanks very much for that overview, Ezra. That was uh, that was really good. And yeah, hopefully, as you guys picked up, the the transition to move to online is really designed to be as as easy as possible uh, using Arlo. Now, if you do have time, we definitely do recommend that you consult with one of your CSMs on uh, you know, how, how you can do that if you need further guidance. The links will be coming out with this um, recorded webinar at, at the end of the session. So to definitely book in with, um, with the CSMs. Now, one of the ways that the team are, are trying to make this process even easier is the Zoom integration, which we're actually working on right now. And we're hoping to get out the door very shortly. So we're just gonna show you guys a sneak peek of what that's gonna look like, because Many of you are probably wondering what tools to use. You know, do we go to, go to webinar as you already have an existing integration? Do we go with Zoom because that seems to be the more popular and, and better choice at the moment? Um, so, so we've decided that we're going to build an integration with Zoom because a lot of our customers have been asking for it, and the goal is there that we can build the, 
the complete solution out out of Arlo and we'll show you how. Um, so basically Zoom has got a range of features, you know, obviously webinar hosting, breakout rooms, virtual whiteboards, file transferring, uh, and coupled with, with Arlo, you know, the, the website integration, your shopping cart, your CRM, your marketing, finance, and reporting tools. Um, you, you can have that, you know, that all in one. Um, so why Zoom, I guess, is an important question to ask. So we've, we've done some research and looked at, you know, what are the most popular video conferencing apps? We've been speaking to our customers and monitoring the new feature requests for them. But this, this graph here really says it all. So that green line that you can see shooting up in the past sort of year is, uh, is Zoom. And obviously it, it is by far the market leader at the moment. And, um, you know, this graph we can see is, you know, up to October 2019. So we expect that recently, and, and you may have seen it in the news, that that's actually surged even further. So uh, a lot of people out there are, are using Zoom and, and they've got a really great support team. Their pricing structure is really good. Uh, and so that's why we've decided let's let's move on to that platform as well. Um, so just looking at the setup of the integration to show you guys a sneak peek at the moment. So at the moment, um, you know, Ezra's shown you how to set up a webinar inside of Arlo. That process is already super simple and we're hoping to make that even, even easier. So if you are running webinars and using Arlo to, to obviously schedule and promote those, there, I, I guess at the moment is a bit of a caveat in that you still have to set the webinar up outside of Arlo and then pull that link into Arlo separately to then promote and sell on your webinar, which is sort of a, a two-step process, I guess. And so we're wanting to simplify that and cut it right down. And so this is sort of what we're we're looking to design at the moment. So when you actually go to build a webinar, as we saw earlier, you can set your dates, you can set your time zone. You can still use a custom URL if you want to have, you know, that external webinar provider and external instructions. But if you're using Zoom, uh, Arlo is actually going to allow you to connect straight to your Zoom account. So let's select the Zoom option here. And then what that's going to do is it's going to provide a list of the Zoom hosts that you actually have inside of Zoom that you can then use to schedule that uh, that meeting or that webinar. And so we can see here if we select the drop down, this is going to give us a list of all of our active Zoom hosts. Um, and there's also going to be some really cool functionality. We haven't shown it here, but we're actually going to show you who are licensed hosts um, as licensed hosts have, uh, you know, the ability to have more people in a in a room, they've got the ability to have an, you know, an extended time frame on the webinars that they're running. So you'll also be able to see that data when you actually go to select your host, which is, is quite cool. So let's select the host here, and that's done. And we can see that all the instructions below, they, they all disappear now. We don't need to worry about filling out any of that because the integration will take care of everything in terms of sending out the join links. Zoom provides all the joining instructions when people click on the links to join the room. So the idea is to simplify it right back so that if you're using Zoom, Arlo will be your one shop. You jump in, you create the webinar, you choose your host, set your date and time, and, and Arlo will take care of the rest for you. You won't need to do anything else. Um, in, in a future, version we are also looking at I guess how, how we can improve on the functionality we already have. One of those ways is to look at things like schedule conflicts. So if you have a Zoom host scheduled in for a meeting and you go to schedule another one at the same time, Arlo will be able to tell you that host has actually got a conflict and therefore you know you know okay that, that Zoom room's in use so I've got to actually go and find another one. Uh, or I need to change this to a different date or time. So again, making it super simple so that you never actually have to leave Arlo to get all of these things set up. Um, as Ezra discussed a bit earlier, we also are looking at multi-session uh, webinars and how we can improve that functionality. At the moment, there is a solution in Arlo to run those, those events and those courses that use multiple sessions, um, but we, we do want to stream like that. So th there will be some enhancements in that space in the future as well. Um, so this is all stuff that the team are working on right now. We do hope to have it out very shortly, but hopefully that's just sort of, you know, giving you a, a bit of a sneak peek into into what's coming and and um, yeah, maybe confirmed your um, I guess your ideas of of moving ahead with Zoom if that's the the option that you've been potentially looking at. Um, so as you can see, once the the webinar has been set up as per usual, at, at the moment you'll be able to see you know all the webinar details. It'll be up on your website. They can registrants can register for it like they normally would any other event, um, and the rest of the process is, is fairly seamless. Um, so I guess that covers off the, the platform side of things in today's webinar. So what we've looked at, just to recap, is we've, we've had a look at, you know, the impact on the training industry, and it's clear that, you know, face-to-face -face, uh, is declining and, and will likely continue to decline as we see, you know, the impacts of COVID continue to, I guess, spread throughout the world. 
um, and, and all of our collective efforts to prevent that is you know going to involve a lot of people staying home when they'd usually be out and about so so we know that is is a fact and that's happening and we can see the data to back that up we also know that online training is becoming more popular we're already seeing people you know schedule more online courses we're seeing registrants take those online courses so um, you know that's the direction really that you you want to be moving in if you're wanting to get through this period um, we've looked at the platform and how to actually set up a webinar and that process you know as you saw can be completed within you know a matter of minutes if you've got the tools in place to host a webinar it's just a case of pulling them into Arlo we've looked at how to move registrants across from you know your face-to-face -face events to your webinar events and again that's a you know a few clicks very seamless all the communications taken care of automatically and also how to open up a new stream of revenue um, selling your recorded webinars as, as e-learning activities um, so you know there's there's some really great options there for you and as we just saw some some new new and exciting integration coming like the zoom um, integration that we're going to be putting out to make all of this even even easier and give you some more options now one of the things we haven't covered is is how to actually run an effective webinar and so we're just going to touch on this briefly because we know that I guess choosing a tool and, and getting the webinar scheduled is only sort of part of the journey there's there's a lot more to running webinars that um, you know it's it's good to be aware of so let's just dive into these I guess points quickly and, and cover these off um, hopefully you're all asking questions and as I mentioned earlier Nick's on standby so if you haven't already now is probably a good time to chuck some questions in um, so Let's jump into some, some tips and tricks. So the first one is obviously to choose a trusted webinar provider. So you want to make sure that the, the provider that you go with has all of the features that you need. So webinar providers can vary quite, um, you know, quite greatly. You know, some have maximum room capacities, others have limited features. You want to make sure, you know, you've got the uh, option to take questions from your participants in a chat feature if you need to, if you're running smaller sessions and need to be talking with people. Um, screen share is obviously really important if you're needing to share resources or show you know presentations like the one that we're we're showing you today drawing tools if you if you you know are going to want to draw on the screen and point certain bits out to the you know to the audience that might not be as as clear as as you'd like recording features again if you're planning on you know recording the webinar selling it at a later date distributing it with your audiences you want to make sure that those can be recorded nice and easily and you've got a place that you can store them a lot of webinar providers do offer some some cloud hosting uh, but they can be quite expensive. So one thing to be conscious of is just to check out the hosting plans because, you know, one or two gigabytes hosting is probably not going to cut it if you're running a lot of webinars. Um, it might be a better option to store them, you know, locally and then upload them to your own hosting provider at a lower cost. So just do be conscious of, of hosting. Um, polls, we had a poll open a, a bit earlier today to ask you, you know, where in the world you're joining us from. We've got another poll that we're going to put up at the end of the session just to ask you what you know what you think we should cover in the next webinar so if you're wanting to poll your audiences and, and ask questions it's a good way to do so and breakout rooms so again if you're running you know large courses and you're wanting to get a bit more interaction with your audience breakout sessions or rooms are a, a great way to do this to allow you to get a bit more personable with with some of the audiences uh, the next the next tip is obviously invest in good equipment so definitely have a laptop or a desktop um, you know they're a bit more reliable than a phone or a a tablet um, you want to make sure you've got a good workstation to you know I guess run your webinar on high quality web camera is important as well so you want to introduce yourself and, and you know make sure the audience can see you at, at a certain point definitely ensure you've got a, a webcam that can you know provide a, a decent amount of quality a reliable headset as well so that your audio is nice and crisp obviously you don't want to be talking into a web camera microphone or you know an external microphone that might provide a bit of noise or chatter um, a, a headset is a, is a really good investment. Uh, fixed internet connection, this one's really important. Wireless is obviously, you know, it is obviously really good in this day and age, but still can be a bit, um, yeah, a bit hard to use in certain, you know, scenarios. You've got no control of how many people can jump onto the Wi-Fi network and, and the bandwidth and, you know, connectivity issues and things like that, distance from your router. So a fixed internet connection is definitely the best way to go if you can get an ethernet cable and, and, and plug straight in. Um, you're going to have you know a lot more reliability there a fixed power input this one is, is actually really important obviously you don't want to be in a laptop and have it go flat halfway through your webinar or you know have a have a headset that's that's wireless and have that die so make sure everything's charged and if possible fixed power input is is a really good option and lighting um, if you are using a webcam obviously make sure your room have has lots of lighting you know obviously windows um, 
can be open to bring lighting in. You've got external lighting, potentially lamps. Um, just make sure that obviously if you are using webcams, you're not stuck in a, a dark, dingy corner and, and people can see you. Um, so there's also creating a webinar-friendly environment. So book out the webinar room longer than you need. This one is, is quite an important one and comes from experience. The last thing you want is to be in the middle of a webinar talking to people and then to have someone else jump in for the next webinar that's about to start. Um, so if you book out you know, half an hour after the expected finish time, then that way you give yourself some leeway for any questions or you know uh, additional topics that you need to cover that you might run out of time for. Um, in this case, for instance, this was you know booked as a 45 minute webinar. We're already at 46 minutes, so we know because we've got that extra leeway, we're not going to be interrupted by someone else joining us when they when they shouldn't be. Uh, put a sign on the door if you can. Uh, another really good tip that comes from experience: if if you're running a webinar, the last thing you want is someone else walking in behind you or interrupting you. Um, you know, I'm sure lots of you have seen the video, the viral video online of the, uh, the gentleman on the news doing a, a webinar and his, his kid comes running in behind him and then the nanny comes chasing him. So if you can, you know, shut the door, put a sign up and, and try and keep those distractions away. And make sure there's no loud noises. So if you've got people next to you, tell, tell your team members or tell the people in the next room that you're going to be running a, a webinar, you know, so nothing <laughs> inappropriate gets yelled out at the wrong time or, or anything like that. It's, it's, it's a really good one. And we've discussed lighting already, um, but it, the key one here is make sure you're comfortable. You know, so you, you could be running a webinar for half a day, you're going to be sitting there for a long period of time in front of a screen. So make sure you've got everything you need, um, you know, some food, some water, whatever, you, whatever it takes to get through a good chair. Uh, test, 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 uh, another really important one. So obviously planning and preparation is key for a webinar. Make sure that you know the software well and how to use it, all the tools available, you know, the chats, the polls, the questions. Um, we, we have talked about all of these things before, but actually getting in and doing it, you know, just making sure you're familiar because some of the softwares um, can be quite tricky to use for the first time. There's, there's actually a lot of functionality out there, uh, probably more so than you, you might realise. Um, check your internet connection is good and working. Test your camera and audio to make sure you've got a clear connection. And if you want to use your camera, that people can see you and know your content as well. So it's obviously really important to go through any any slides that you're going to be covering and you know make sure that you're you're familiar with what you're delivering to your audience. Turn off all background apps. This is a really good one to prevent you know unwanted pop-ups from from appearing midway through the webinar. Um, and completing a dry run is is key as well. Um, and, and really useful. You can get some good feedback from your your internal team as to you know any changes that you might need to to make. Um, keep your audience engaged. Um, definitely important. Start on time. Make sure that if you say you're going to start at 10, you start at 10. You don't leave people waiting too long, or they might start to drop off. Um, set expectations about what's going to be covered. So you know put put an agenda up and go through what you're going to be talking about. So that way, if someone's joined and they think actually this isn't for me, they can leave. Um, so you're not you know, potentially wasting anybody's time. Uh, ask questions if you can. Use things like polls um, to get some feedback from your audience, um, which we've, we've talked about. Send follow-up surveys. Um, obviously, a big part of the the face-to-face -face training that we've we've run in the past. Uh, a number of you use feedback surveys. You can do the same thing for online learning. Is, is send us you know a survey afterwards. How was the content delivery? How was the content itself? What could be improved? And use that to you know, ultimately make your webinars better over time. Take regular breaks as well. If you are running, uh, you know, a, a session for a day, you won't want to keep everyone in front of the computer for, you know, a number of hours. So, you know, take take breaks where you can and, and let people know to take 15 off and, and to rejoin. Um, share your screen, so show people what you're looking at and use visuals where pos possible as well. Um, so, you know, less words on the screen, try and talk to the slides or the content that you're delivering and and deliver it visually if possible to keep people engaged. Uh, and we have discussed breakout sessions for larger groups to encourage you know, some more interaction. Uh, but that pretty much covers off our, our tips and tricks tips and <laughs> tips and tricks section. It's a bit of a tongue twister. But so in, in terms of next steps, I guess um, we are going to be distributing this session as we mentioned earlier on. Do book in with your CSM if you want to go through anything in a bit more detail, or as Ezra discussed, if you want to talk about you know multi-session or blended blended live online. Um, if you want to talk about the order processes involved in terms of maybe refunding after a transfer or crediting, um, there's obviously a lot more you know that can be done in this space. And so if you do have questions, definitely ask because our um, our CSMs do have a lot of 
experience in this area and we've already been helping a number of our customers make this transition and so we really want to make it work for you guys as well. Um, take advantage of our special offers. If you haven't already heard, we're running a number of special offers to help um, you know, training businesses get through this period. We're giving out free administrators so you know if, if you've got team members and most of you probably do working remotely, um, you know, get in touch with us and we can provide them with some, some free licenses so that they can use the system and help your team out uh, at a time like this. All the registration cancellations at the moment are, are currently being credited so you don't have to worry about the standard um, you know, 30 day rule. If, if someone's cancelling at the moment, um, you're not going to pay any registration usage for those. Um, we've got lots of tips and tricks on our resource centre on the website which we'll be sending out to you guys. Um, this will cover, you know, all of the stuff that we've gone through today, there's a number of blogs on there about running webinars and choosing a you know a webinar provider. So lots of lots of useful material there for you to to use. Uh, and so next up, we've got a, a, I guess another poll which we're going to run just quickly now. So I'm just going to pop this up now and say what would you like our next I guess COVID related webinar topic to be. Um, we've had some really good feedback so far from the last one that we ran about uh, bringing in some actual customers to talk through their journeys uh, through COVID and how they've transitioned to live online learning. Um, some customers interested in e-learning, so you know definitely tell us what you uh, what you want to see in the next webinar, and we, we're going to try and get that set up in the next um, you know couple of weeks. It'd be really good to have you along. Um, so while you're all filling out the poll, we're also just going to run through some of the questions. If you haven't already, um, I guess, asked any questions, definitely do so now. Uh, but let's just take a look and see what we've got in the Q&A list and we'll run through some of these uh, so that you can, I guess, hear some of the answers. Um, yep, uh, definitely the recording is going to be sent out at the end. Um, now there's a good question here about GoToMeeting um, and, and no plans to drop this. So we, as we mentioned earlier, we are looking to get Zoom integration out the door soon, but for, for now GoToWebinar will still be supported so you don't have to worry about that um, at, at the moment. There's no immediate plans for us to, to drop that product. So if you are already using it, then um, yeah, then definitely don't worry because there's there's no immediate plans to uh, to shift off that. Uh, well, webinars allow sessions. We've already, I guess, discussed that one as well. But if you've missed it at the moment, there is a way to support sessions with webinars using a, a live online venue, so to speak. But the aim is that with the Zoom integration that we're building, we're planning to actually make that functionality native to Arlo so that you won't have to use that um, that anymore. You, you'll actually be able to schedule separate sessions. Um, as webinars, and so that's something that we're all really excited to uh, to have coming soon. Um, can you offer courses free of charge? Absolutely, yep. So anything that you run in Arlo, you can you can set no price on. So it's up to you to decide whether or not you have a, you know a price on a course, uh, and you take an order or payment in the checkout, or if you just want a simple quick registration form where you say take their name and email address, and you know they're registered. Um, so definitely, yep. Um, let's see what else we've got in here. Uh, so we've got a question here from uh, Nick Abbott. Can you please comment at the end of uh, my question about the Google Calendar integration to iCal? So at the moment, I'm not certain what our plans are for a Google Calendar integration. I know that it is in our feature request forum. And I know that there are a lot of customers that are looking at it, uh, but we'll have to follow that one up with products. So uh, let us come back to you with an answer on that when we when we distribute the uh, the recording, and we'll get some some feedback from our product team there. Um, so this is a good question, actually. How do we transfer registrations with sessions? So you can transfer registration with sessions if the sessions uh, do not have a choice, meaning that when the person registered, it was a, a no choice of sessions, so they registered for all sessions. If they registered and there was a choice of sessions at the time, that does add a bit of complexity, and so the transfer wizard doesn't support that natively. However, there is still a solution for it. So uh, what we'll do is we'll add some notes onto the question. I won't go into it in detail now, um, but we, we do actually have a solution, especially now with the new order system that we've introduced into the system to allow you to actually move people between uh, events with different sessions and options. Um, obviously sessions and options can be priced differently so that there is some added complexity there, but there is, a, there is actually a process that you can now follow to do that quite, quite seamlessly. 
Um, and so we've got a few more questions about transfers at the moment. Uh, let's see here. There's a good question here about transferring more than one registration at a time. So within the platform at the moment, you can uh, you can only obviously move a registrant at a time, but if you're looking to do say a big move of registrants uh, across to uh, a live online event, then definitely reach out to us because we can assist you with that initial transition. Um, you know, it's, it's obviously not going to be something that you'll you'll probably need to be going uh, do going forward after this period, but for now, definitely as uh, you know, you may be scheduling a large number of live online courses uh, and wanting to move those registrants over at once. Uh, it's something that we We'll definitely look to, to help you out with because we don't want you doing, um, I guess, all of that individually. Uh, let's just see what else we've got in here. Uh, we've got a question here about how to integrate Moodle with Arlo. So this webinar, the focus was to stick to live online, um, but we do look at, by the looks of the poll, have a, a bit of interest in self-paced and e-learning as well. Um, so it's very likely that you'll see something like that come out in the future, but we will add some notes in, um, into the documentation we're going to send out at the end of this to show you guys how you can also integrate with Moodle, because that process is, is, is quite straightforward as well, if you have Moodle set up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, there's some questions about the accounting processes regarding moving people to, say, a cheaper course. Um, as Ezra mentioned, that is possible as well. There, there, are, there are ways to do that, and so we'll be sure to include those in the, uh, in the documentation that we send out as well. Um, it looks like there's some good, uh, I guess some good feedback coming through. When will Zoom be available? Uh, very good question. So at the moment, the team are looking to have that out the door within the next four to six weeks. Um, it is being built. We've just got to make sure it's been tested thoroughly and works for you guys, and then we'll be looking to roll it out. So we're hoping that that's not going to be too much later than the beginning of May. So watch this space. There is a chance we may get it out earlier. It really just depends on what the team encounter as they're uh, working with the, the Zoom code base. So uh, it is looking really good at the moment, and we'll, we'll be sure to keep you updated through that process. But um, yeah, it's not like you're going to be waiting months and months for it. It's, it, it's our number one priority at the moment to to get out the door. Um, do, do, do. It looks like that is pretty much it. There's, there's a few more questions, but those seem to be the more, I guess, common ones um, that are being asked here. Uh, there's a question about uptake and free training, and if that's increased, uh, we will have a look at the numbers and, and, and share those stats with you guys and see what we can get. Um, but yeah, there are a few more questions I can see in the list here. It looks like there are actually a few pages. So we're probably not going to have time to get through them all as we're getting closer to 11. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll be sure that we, we definitely look through all these questions at the end of the session and get uh, you know some detailed answers out to you guys as we distribute the recording. Um, but that is, I think, it for us today. So thanks really, really much for joining. Um, you know, it, it's it's been great to see you all come in and and uh, sit with us and, and listen to us for an hour or so. So I really appreciate your time. Um, as I mentioned earlier, everything's going to be coming out, the webinar, the sessions, um, uh, the session recording, the questions. We'll, we'll be putting that out shortly. Definitely encourage you to book on with your CSM, spend some time with them going through this transition. Um, you know, they can have tailored discussions to your business and your situation, and, and we really want you to take advantage of that and, and make sure that we can see you through these, these tough times. Um, but we hope that you've, you know, you found this informative and, and you've seen how easy it can be to do this with Arlo and that you do decide to jump on this opportunity and actually start moving your courses to live online. And as a result, um, you know, you can continue to be successful into the into the future. So thanks very much, guys, for, for joining us and we'll we'll chat soon. And uh, yeah, see you later.